Uh, my name is Marco Hansen. I'm in Austin, Texas. This is Texan Translation, which is a small family business that translates uh, mostly legal documents. And I met Virginia at a conference several years ago in San Antonio where I was presenting on guns and knives and other firearms terminology for court interpreters. And Virginia, I believe, was, was presenting on note-taking. Um, this topic looks familiar. And I remember thinking, she is so good at taking notes. I, I, I'm, I'm like 1% of the way there. My, my notes are just so hard to read and make sense of. I've got a lot to learn. And so I started teaching court interpreting at University of Texas and used her videos for my students in the note-taking class. We watched the video and then practiced some of the some of the basic symbols and techniques for taking notes quickly and efficiently and then going back and understanding your notes afterwards when you're interpreting, which is harder for me. And so I was so happy that she agreed to um, volunteer her time today for this webinar. And we did a little survey on our Facebook group that we're both on, which has become a Texas court interpreter. And note taking was the most popular topic. And so that's why she prepared this lesson. Um, I just want to make a couple of administrative comments. Uh, if you have a certificate, certification or license that requires ongoing CE and you can put in a CE request yourself without documentation, you're welcome to count this for CE, depending on what kind of interpreter you are and where you are. But we won't be producing certificates of attendance to confirm that, um, just because it's a free presentation and that takes a lot of paperwork to schedule those and, and set it up with each certifying authority. If you have questions, please just jot them down on your notes because everyone's practicing note taking today. And then at the end, we'll have a question and answer time and you can put your questions in chat and Virginia will get to those as time allows. Um, the, this video is being recorded and will be put on YouTube at the end and I'll put up the link for uh, my YouTube channel so you can find that. And finally, um, our charity, I like to sponsor a, a different charity for um, some of these presentations and suggest that you make a donation if you find this training useful and you'd like to show your appreciation then the charity that I'm endorsing today is Asian Family Support Services of Austin and there's a link in the chat here and it'll also be going out in an email and they provide a lot of uh, interpretation and other legal services to victims of domestic violence and trafficking and so forth in 29 languages all around Central Texas so that would be a good place to make a small donation. If everybody here um, donated um, $2, $5, it would make a huge difference for somebody who's in crisis, uh, an immigrant to the United States. And so in the chat, you'll see um, in Virginia's website for Interpret Train and the donation website, and then finally my YouTube channel where you can subscribe and it'll give you a notification when this video and other videos like it pop up and are posted and ready to view. And so without further ado, Virginia, over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, let me just go over here because I'm getting some feedback. Okay. I don't understand why I'm still getting feedback. Oh, I know. Let me make my volume. Can you mute that? Here it is. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be here with you today. Um, I am so happy that Marco invited me and I am also very thankful for every one of you who are here and are willing to take your Saturday morning or afternoon, depending on where you are, to train a little bit with us. So when Marco asked me to come on and informed me that you guys were interested in getting some CONSEC training, I started asking myself, okay, what should I cover? Because it is quite extensive. There are many options. And then I decided to go with the most typical questions that I get asked as a teacher and that people approach me with. So the first thing is people ask me, how can I improve my notes for the consecutive mode? And we're going to be dealing with that. And secondly, how do I learn to interpret longer chunks? So we're going to be dealing with those two things. We have very little amount of time, but I do want to make sure to get the most out of that time. Kind of like when you go to a workout that only lasts 20 minutes, but they make you sweat. That's what I want to do here today. I want us to take advantage of all the time and really get a good workout for you guys. So um, I narrowed it down to what I think is one of the most important things in note-taking, which is the power of selectivity. 
one of the basic issues that I see repeatedly in my students when they're having difficulty taking longer long chunks in the consecutive mode, or when they have difficulty with memory or when they have difficulty understanding their notes or keeping up with the speaker is the fact that they're take they're writing down too much. So one of the most important things that you can learn is to be very selective with your notes. So we can see here, we have uh, several light bulbs in this image and only one of them is lit up. I want you to think of these light bulbs like words that a speaker is uttering in the same way that a speaker might have said 20 words and you've only taken down one or they've said 10 words and you've only taken down one. That's like what this image is trying to convey right that not everything that comes out of the speaker's mouth is worth you jotting it down okay so basically we're going to be dealing with how to avoid taking notes of the fluff how to only have on your page what is strictly necessary so you can reconstruct that message and then render it faithfully one of the most powerful tools for this is listening and visualization. I always tell my students that their notes are going to be worthless if they're not listening, because notes have the power of retrieval, but you can't retrieve what you didn't perceive in the first place. So the only way you're going to actually going to be able to look at your notes and make sense of them is if you were listening to the speaker as the speech was being produced. So as you're listening, you should be doing that exercise of visualizing what you hear and visualizing as actively as you can. And then you're going to make sure to jot down only the key units of meaning. No fluff should make it on your page. It's easier said than done. We're going to practice. And part of the fluff is abbreviating long words. You only want on your page strictly what is necessary to spark your memory. And that includes full long words should be abbreviated. So these are the things we're going to be working on these three fronts, visualization, selecting very well what you write down when it comes to which words and then selecting which letters of each word you decide to write down and all of this is going to allow you to keep up uh, before we get started i am curious and i couldn't help myself i wanted to know learn a little bit about the group i wanted to know a little bit about you so if you could use the chat to let us know where are you in the world right now what part of the world are you joining us from egypt wow awesome florida Columbus, Ohio, Canada, Chile, Kentucky, Peru, London, San Francisco, Maryland, uh, Portugal. Oh, how exciting. Another person from Egypt, Bogota, a fellow Colombian. How awesome. Okay, great. So awesome that you guys are joining us from so many parts. Let's talk about your languages. What are your language combinations? I, I for, neglected to say I'm in California, the United States, and my language combination is in English, Spanish, and we have Mandarin. Arabic, Japanese, English, Spanish, uh, Italian, Russian, Portuguese, ooh, Farsi, what a beautifully diverse group. Awesome. Okie doke. Now we're going to talk about your fields of practice. I work uh, mainly as a court interpreter. I also work as a medical interpreter and I do some conference interpretation. What about you guys? What kind of fields, immigration, community, court, medical, conference, legal? Beautiful. Okay, awesome. Love it. Now we're going to move on to your years of experience. I started working as an interpreter in the year 2003. Uh, so I've been working as an interpreter for almost 19 years. So I started when I was five years old. <laughs> We have 15, 7, 28, for instance, 2009, since 2011. Wow, a lot of experience, a lot of combined experience. Did somebody write 50 years? Oh my goodness, I think I saw 50 years, but it's going by so quickly, I can't really tell. All right, let's talk about your birthplace. I was born in Cali, Colombia. How about you guys? Where in the world? Hungary, Mexico, Colombia. Guatemala, Honduras, Chile. Oh, how beautiful. And do you have other professions? I know that uh, interpreters often come from different professions. It tends to be our second or third profession. My first profession was psychology. Well, actually, my first profession was teaching language, uh, uh, second languages. And then I became a psychologist and then I became an interpreter. I have psychology teacher, anthropology landscaper. Awesome. Okay. Legal assistant. Ooh, I love this group. Lots of diversity. Beautiful. Okay. 
So we're going to get down to it because like I said, we have very little time and I want to make sure that we take advantage of every second. Um, I am going to ask you guys, we are going to be using the chat a lot for participation, but I am going to ask you to please try to limit your chat interactions uh, to the participation that I'm requesting from you. Sometimes I find it a little distracting and I know other students do as well when I'm presenting something and then people begin to write in the chat questions that are not related or comments that are not related. So if you you could please hold your questions until the end. I'm going to make sure I answer all of them. Um, but while we're working, I want you to use the chat for the participation that I'm encouraging you guys to do. OK, so is everyone ready? Because we're here to work. That's how you get changes. OK, we could talk until we're blue in the face. Nothing would happen. But I want you guys to be ready to work. OK, everyone says, yes, ready. Awesome. What an awesome group. OK, this is what you're going to be needing today. And I'm sure all of you guys have this at hand. You're going to need a voice recorder and you can use your um, smartphones recorder you're going to need a pen and you're going to need paper and when i say paper that can be whatever you want i like to have um my six inches by nine inches steno pad and i think you guys can see the camera uh the notes uh the type of uh, notepad that i mean six inches by nine inches but you can also just have any um white pad or legal pad or loose sheets of paper okay you can also use uh, uh digital um uh stuff it doesn't have to be paper but i want you to have these three things something to record yourself with something to write with and something to write on okay so let's jump right in we're going to talk about selectivity and this answers the question of what to write when you're taking notes for the consecutive mode i want you to be incredibly selective and only go for the key units of meaning I guess I said before, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they take note of every single word uttered by the speaker. Can you guys use the chat and tell me what happens when you try to take down every single word that the speaker utters? Confusion. Okay, what else? Confusion. What else? You waste time. You get lost. You can't. You lose track. You miss out. You can't catch up very good most importantly even if you write shorthand you're not going to be able most likely to keep up with every single thing the speaker saying every word that is being uttered so don't take note of every word so you're only going to jot down the most important parts of what's being expressed the most important parts of the message to spark your memory so you can recall the rest. Like again, we have the metaphor of if these were all, let's say, two, four, seven words that the speaker uttered, I'm only going to choose one of those words to help me remind myself of everything else. Because the less you write, the more you listen. So as interpreters, we have to divide our attention. We have to be listening and decoding, understanding, memorizing, and taking notes all at the same time. Uh, but the more that we're occupied writing, the less we're going to be listening. And listening is really the key to the whole operation. So you want to make sure that you write as little as possible, because the more you listen, the more you remember. So I want you to think of your notes as one of these connect the dots games. I don't know if you guys are familiar with these. I don't know if they exist anymore. I'm probably dating myself by mentioning this. But um, this little game, these are, these are little um, papers that you get and then it tells you to go to one from one to two and from two to three and from three to four and from four to five. I want this to be a, a metaphor of how your notes should look. Your notes should not be the full drawing. Your notes should be just the main points. And when you interpret and when you read your notes in the consecutive mode, you're going to connect the dots. But initially, what's on your page are just the dots that help you connect and weave the full story together. OK, so your notes have to be very succinct. Let's talk about what not to write. Can you guys use the chat and let me know examples of words that you should not be taking down? The very good Gina. Articles, the, a, a, and prepositions. Many times prepositions you shouldn't have to, of, on, uh -huh. non-content word, fillers. Very good, you guys. So these are examples of words that you should not be taking down, OK? And again, everything is different. So that's why I say usually. It, it depends on the context. But usually, you don't need the word of. You don't need the word to. You don't need the word a. Uh, you don't need the word the, on, in at, it, for, by. These things should be one of those things that don't make it to your page and you fill in those gaps. 
It is your job to weave that message together. So it shouldn't all be there on your page, okay? Let's move on to the power of visualization. And I see that we have some raised hands. And as I said before, I'm gonna ask you guys to please make sure to take note of your questions and ask them at the end. And I will get to all your questions, but we do wanna make use, good use of the little time that we have. Um, so visualization is incredibly powerful. When you are visualizing, you're listening actively. You're not listening passively. You're actually creating associations for your brain to be able to remember that message. So anytime you're working, and I encourage this for all the modes of interpretation, not just for consecutive, as you're listening, if you're picturing the story and picturing it with as much detail as possible, as specific as possible, that will help your brain create associations to be able to retrieve that message when it's time for you to render it, okay? So can you guys use the chat to let me know why you think visualization is an effective tool for interpreting? Why is visualization so good? Very good, Monica. It helps to, to memorize. It creates a story. It's a film in your head. Our brains are wired for imagery. It helps you to understand better. It helps you to create, to, to understand the sequence of event. A picture is worth a thousand words. Very good. So visualizing is incredibly powerful. So without further ado, I want to get started on our first exercise. And we're going to practice visualization. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same practice with you repeatedly. We're gonna practice the same practice from different angles, okay? Kind of like when you're working with a trainer and they say, now we're gonna work on your upper abs and now we're gonna work on your lower abs and now we're gonna work on, this is what we're gonna do with this same practice. We're gonna work with the same practice from different angles. Now, why do we repeat the same practice? And this is one of the things that most students don't get. Uh, they tend to do a practice once and move on, most interpreting students, and then they miss out on the power of repetition. What happens when you do the same practice, the same exact practice over and over again? You drill it, you perfect it, you master it, practice makes perfect. Very good, you guys. What's happening cognitively, because I said, as I said previously, I am a psychologist, so that's uh, my background. What happens when you are learning a new skill is that you want to be able to isolate that variable. You want your brain to not be preoccupied with much else, but the acquisition and the implementation of that skill. This is a very uh, uh, fundamental concept of cognitive psychology, which is I'm going to zone in on this and I'm going to make my brain not have to worry about anything else. So when I'm doing the same practice and my brain learns the content by memory, I've already done this practice, then you can focus on other skills and your brain is not preoccupied with, am I understanding this message? Can I retain this? Will I be able to remember the sequence? Will I? Because you already know the content and that allows you to focus on the skill that is new to you. The good news is once you learn a skill, your brain can apply it next time you're exposed to things that are not new to you. I'm sorry, that are new to you. So you begin applying the skills with content that you've known, that you've worked on repeatedly. And then I promise you that once you pick up the skill, your brain is going to be able to apply it with new content, okay? So we're going to do a little exercise. I want you guys to just visualize. We're not going to worry about anything else but visualizing. And I'm going to be incredibly, I'm going to be reading this very slowly, okay? I'm going to be reading this, uh, this particular thing. Nobody can see my, my, my text, right? Tell, show, tell me in the chat if you can see my text. I don't want you guys to be able to see my text. Okay, good. I want everybody to close your eyes and I'm gonna read this message slowly and I want you to visualize everything that I'm, that I'm saying. And I want you to visualize which is, with as much specificity as possible. So I, if I say a clown is walking down the street, I want you to imagine a clown with poofy purple hair and a red nose and an, uh, an orange outfit and big shoes, okay? I want you guys, it's okay if you see my notebook, it's okay. Um, I want you guys to be, be as specific as you can with this clown, okay? Here we go, close your eyes and see what I'm saying. Today was the worst day ever. I woke up one hour late because my stupid alarm didn't go off. My neighbor, this 19-year-old heavy metal lover, started his noisy and obnoxious drum rehearsal. Okay. 
now we're going to go back to our presentation. Let me go back here. Okay, let me go ahead and share again. How was that for you guys? Were you able to see in your mind's eye? Use the chat. Were you able to see in your mind's eye that specific stuff that we're talking about? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Um, what did you guys do to see one hour late? How could you perceive one hour late? What, what, what technique did you use to see one hour? An alarm clock, very good, very good. How about um, the, the uh, neighbor? What did you see when we talked about the neighbor? The drums, heavy metal, okay, perfect. Okay, you guys. So the more we visualize, the better it's going to be. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my desktop and we're gonna move on. Let me get my PowerPoint. Beautiful. And everybody should be able to see this now. Okay, now we're gonna practice selectivity. Now that we know this message, we're gonna move on to selectivity. So I, now I want you to listen to that message. And now I do want you to take notes, but I want you to only take down the key units of meaning. So if I say, today I woke up one hour late, and you could only choose one word out of all of those, which ones would it be? Which word, if you could only use one? Late, okay, what else? Who else would do, it, have, do different than late? One hour, woke, very good. So it's different for everybody, but I want you to be very selective, okay? That's the key here. I want you guys to be very selective. So I'm gonna stop my share one more time, and I'm gonna go ahead and read the message, and I want you guys to take notes. Here we go. Don't take note of the fluff. Here we go. Today was the worst day ever. I woke up one hour late because my stupid alarm didn't go off. My neighbor, this 19-year-old heavy metal lover, started his noisy and obnoxious drum rehearsal. Doke. I'm going to share my PowerPoint with you guys again. Here, how was that? How did you feel? Were you able to really focus on the important stuff and not the fluff? Okay, awesome. So here we go. Now, I want you to read your notes out loud and I want you to voice record those notes. You can either work with the same language and you'll paraphrase the message in English or you can work with your second language, okay? But I want you to read your notes and weave the message together. Go ahead and use the chat when you're done. Okay, I think most of you are done, so we're going to move on. Now I want you to go ahead and compare what you recorded. Play your recording, and this is something I always want you to do when you're training as an interpreter. Always listen to what you voice recorded. People tend to record themselves, and then they don't listen to their recording, which I don't understand what point, what, what's, the, what's the purpose of that. But I do want you to listen to your recording and compare it to this text. And I want to make sure that you guys Take note of any differences between what you're saying in your recording and what the text says. Take note of anything that you change. Here we go. Play your recording and compare it to this.
Okay. I think most of you are done. How accurate was your rendition? I already see some people sharing that it was okay, that they made a few omissions, 99% says Edmundo. Okay, it was all right. Okay. And I also see um, that there was a comment about how it's easier to take notes and, and to be accurate when I'm reading it slowly and when you're familiar with it. And that's the point. Remember, when you're learning something new, you always want to start at a low level and then you work yourself up. So don't be impatient and allow yourself to pick up these skills and then you can go ahead and apply them at more difficult in more difficult conditions. Okay. Now, I want you to use the chat to tell me what were your keywords. Look at your notepad and type in the keywords that you wrote down. Worst 19 drums. Great job, Edmundo. What else? Picture of a clock. Good, you guys are working with images. That's fantastic. Worst hours. Okay, great, you guys. It sounds like you were very selective. Let's move on now. I'm going to uh, quantify this. Um, one of the things that I find is that students have a difficulty really uh, having a clear idea of if they're writing down too much. And I want to be able to quantify it for you. And the way we're going to quantify it is I'm going to give you the words that I think are essential, the key units of meaning that I would write down, and you have to remember that everybody's different. You might have written down different ones. It doesn't matter. We're going to go with my method just so you can put a number on what you've done. So I want you to go ahead and give your, look at your notes and give yourself a point if you took note of any of these words that are going to show up. Okay? So if any of these green words made it to your page, and when I say made it to your page, whether you took note of it, whether you abbreviated it, whether you made a, a, a drawing for it, a symbol for it, the full word, it doesn't matter. If it made it to your page, I want you to give yourself one point. Go ahead and look at your notes, compare your notes to these green words on the screen and count how many of these words made it to your page. All of them, good job. Oh, you guys are doing great, awesome. Okay, so these are the words that I would say are essential. Today, worst, woke, hour late, alarm, and didn't go off and just be a slash, um, neighbor, 19, heavy metal, and drum rehearsal. With these words, they would be like our connect the dots. These would be the dots that we would have, okay? All righty. So we've already shared the amount of points. Very good. Now I want you to take off a point for any of these following words that did make it to your page. Again, whether you wrote down the full word, whether you abbreviated the word, or whether you drew a symbol for this word, these words should not make it to your page. So I want you to look at this screen. If any of these words made it to your page, I want you to take off a point. Good, you guys. Good, good, good. None of you guys wrote these words down. I'm super proud of you. None of these words should have made it to your page. Good work. Okay. Now, I want you guys to take a photo of your notes and send it to info at interpretrain. Go ahead and send me your notes. And I'd like to see what your notes look like. Okay. Let me make sure that I have my email open so I can see with you guys. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and share some of the notes that you guys have sent. Oh, I forgot to mention it. Please don't send the small images. Um, send them um, as uh, actual size or large so we can see it. Okay. And we're going to take a look at some of these beautiful notes that you guys have taken. Let me freshen up, see if I, if I refresh. Oh, and I'm sorry, I might have not mentioned the, where, the, where the email is. So let me actually go back here. I want you to send your photos of your notes to info at interpretrain.com. Info at interpretrain.com. Okay. So let's go back here and see if we get any beautiful notes that we can share. Oh, Audra. Okay. And beautiful. Beautiful work. Okay, so what do we see here? What do we see here on Audra's notes? Can you guys share in the chat what you observe from her notes? She has many symbols. 
She's writing diagonally and vertically. What else? Is she writing down every single word that she hears? She's crossing things out. Very good. She's underlining things. Very good. So she's being incredibly selective. She's using um, uh, most of the words that made it to her page were, except for the word late, but that's not a, a big one, were abbreviated. OK, beautiful, beautiful job. Awesome. Let's thank you, Audra, for sharing. And now let's take one more look and we'll see Adriana Caballero's notes. And oh, I don't think I'm able to see that very well. So let's go to another one. Let's go to Erika's. Oh, another one that was a little different. Let's see if we have luck with Luis. Okay, good job, Luis. Look at this spaciousness. I love how spacious Luis's notes are. Okay, he's uh, giving himself a lot of room. Uh, he's choosing what he writes um, and he's crossing things out. Very good. There might be room for even a little bit more selectivity because there are a lot of things on the page, but it's beautiful verticality, beautiful shifting, and very spacious, which I love. Okay, all right, let's go back to our presentation. So now we're going to talk about abbreviations because abbreviations are another way that you can be very selective. Okay. So one of the things that you can do to abbreviate is to just, if you take a word that's longer than four letters, all of the, anything that's more than four letters should not make it to your page the full word. So for example, if we have the word paper, you can just write down the first three letters, P-A-P. -P. The word water, first three letters, W-A-T. The word apple, first three letters, APP. That's one option. Another option, and this is my favorite, is to eliminate the middle vowels. If a word starts with a vowel, you don't eliminate it. Like the word apple, you would remain the A. But any middle vowels would become abbreviated. Okay? So paper, we get rid of the A and the E becomes PPR. Water, we get rid of the A and the E and it becomes WTR. And apple, we remain. We keep the A because it starts with an A and we need that letter that it starts with, okay? And somebody was saying that you can also do H2O or a drop of water. Absolutely, you can. Okay, this is another thing to do. We all have worked with, uh, we've all done text messaging abbreviations such as by the way, BTW, uh, BRB, be right back, um, TTYL, talk to you later, LOL, laughing out loud, today, to and day. Can you guys share in the chat other things that you tend to do, uh, abbreviations that you tend to use when you're uh, on social media or when you're texting? ASAP, LMK, B4, BN4, NP for no problem, the, the letter Y for Y. Very good, you guys. So that's what we should be doing. So now I'm going to read to you a list of words, okay? I'm going to read to you the list of words that we saw that I find are the keywords. And I want you guys to go ahead and take note of these words, trying to abbreviate them. Okay, so here we go. Take notes and abbreviate only a list of words. Here we go. Today. Worst. Woke. Hour late. Alarm didn't go. Neighbor. Heavy metal. Drum rehearsal. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and read this, this list of abbreviated words, but I want you to try to weave the whole message together again. I want you to look at these abbreviated notes, take your voice recorder and tell me the full story, weaving, connecting the dots and giving me the full story. OK, go ahead and voice record.
I think most of you guys are done, so we're going to move on. I want you guys to take a photo of your latest notes and, and send them to us. Please don't send small files and make sure that it's upright uh, to info at interpretrain.com. So you can send it actual size or large, okay? Let's see if I can show some of the beautiful notes that you guys are sharing with us. Okay. Get back in there to make sure that we refresh and we have the latest stuff. Awesome. Okay, let's look at Jesse's. We're going to look at Jesse's notes. Okay. So he has worst alarm. This is, I guess, didn't go off. Noisy neighbor. Okay. Now, what Jesse, what could we do with this word neighbor? How could we abbreviate this word neighbor? So we don't write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. Very good, Vanya. N, B, R, you could get rid of the vowels. Very good, you guys. Okay, good job though. Let's look at the next one. Let's go with Sena. Let's look at Sena's beautiful notes. Oh, we can't because they're not. Okay. Let's go with Adriana again. Oh, well, probably that's unfair. Here we go. Um, look at these beautiful notes. Oh my goodness, Adriana, this is fantastic. Look at today. Look at worst. Look at woke. One hour late. Alarm. She just went like A-L-M and she crossed it, slashed it out. Uh, this is a house and uh, an arrow. Beautiful. Look at drums. Look at rehearsal. Fan this is what I want you guys to be doing. Fantastic work. Love it. Let's do one more. Let's see. Okay. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay. We can see that she did um, this person, I don't know if he's a he or she, look at the word neighbor. The word metal could have also been, um, it, it, you know, we could have maybe gotten away with M-T-L or M-E-T-L. Look at wake up, look at worse, look at today. Beautiful work, you guys. Awesome, awesome work. This is what I'm talking about. Good job. Okay, let's go back to our presentation and let's move on. I'm going to give you guys a new message. It's time to work with a new chunk. And of course, we're going to go a little faster this time. So I want you to try to put the three things we're working on together. I want you to, as you listen to the message and visualize what you're hearing, I also want you to be very selective on what you jot down. And I want you to make sure that you abbreviate any long words. So we're working on three things, listening and visualizing, selecting only key words, and abbreviating long words. We're gonna do all of this together, okay? So go ahead and take, be ready with your notepad. We're gonna go with the next dictation. Here we go. And that's what jolted me out of my sleep. He was beating those drums so loudly that I almost had a panic attack. But I guess I'm lucky that he woke me up. Use your notes to voice record.
Okay, you guys, I think most of you are done, so we're moving on. Now I want you to compare what you just recorded to this text, and I want you to take note of anything you've changed. If it's the same meaning, don't, don't, don't write it down as a mistake. Look, for example, instead, instead of home, you said house, that's not a biggie. But if you miss something or instead of house, you said car, then that would be considered an, uh, 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 an, uh, a modification of meaning. Or if you omitted something or if you added something that wasn't there, you're going to take note of that. Okay, play your recorded rendition and compare it to this text. Okay, you guys, I think that uh, most of you are done. How accurate was your rendition? Some of you guys were telling me that you left out panic attack, okay, replaced a few things, forgot almost, okay, all right, all right. Now I want you to use the chat, the chat to share which were your keywords. What were the keywords that made it to your page? Loud, attack, drums, lucky, loud, jolted, panic. Good job, you guys. Good job. These are all good words. Now I want you to do the same thing that we were doing, the quantitative uh, process. Again, these are the words I've chosen. They could have been different for you, but these are the words I believe that were along with my uh, hierarchy of words and compare your notes to these words. If your notes in any way included these highlighted words, I want you to give yourself a point for each one. Here we go. Somebody was saying that they put the Z, 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 Z for sleep. Love that. And most of you guys pretty had pretty high scores. Okay, great. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and go with the taking points off. Now we're going to count how many of these fluff words you took note of. If your page in any way represented these words, whether it was a symbol or an abbreviation or the actual word, you're going to take off a point. Here we go. I'm seeing a lot of zeros, zero, 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 zeros. Yay, you guys are not taking note of the fluff. Love it. Awesome. Somebody took one word. Thank you for your honesty. Okay, we're going to work on getting rid of that. That's an it. That's going to be your next goal to get rid of that. Okay. I want you guys to take a photo of your notes and I want you to send it to info at interpret train. Let's check out your notes. I want to see what you guys are doing. Let's go back here. Inbox. Uh, let's see the latest notes. Oh, I got ones from Samar. I hope Samar's notes are yay. Let's see. Oh, okay. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can get my screen to go up a little bit so we can see. Hmm. Let me try this. I'm having difficulty, but can you guys see? I think you guys can see a little bit. These are really, really awesome notes, okay? Um, there might even be a, an opportunity to abbreviate a little further the word drum. You could get rid of the U, but these are really nice. Very succinct, no fluff on here. Love it. Selectivity, 100 points on that. Uh, let's look at um, Adelina. Adelina's notes. Oh, 
I got some, you guys are putting it in so fast that I'm getting someone else. Okay, today worst woke up, okay, one hour alarm. There's a little room for more abbreviation in alarm, but I love the way she put didn't go off. Um, heavy, no, neighbor, look at the beautiful abbreviation of neighbor. Metal could use a little more abbreviation and drum could use a little more abbreviation. Beautiful selection of words. Excellent work. There is room for a little more abbreviation, Erika, but really good work. Let's look at Mauro's. You guys bring it, taking it in so quickly that it's hard to see them. Okay, here we go. Oh, I love these notes, Mauro. Look at this. Okay, great, great selection of words. There's still some room for abbreviation. For example, the word sleep. How could you make sleep a little shorter? Use the chat. SLP or ZZ, very good. The word loud, if we were to abbreviate the word loud, how would we? Very good, LD, beautiful, getting rid of the vowels. It, I love this, this is really good work. I love the verticality. I love the selection of words. I love how spacious it is. I think there's room for a little bit more abbreviation, but it's awesome work, Mauro. Let's do one more. Let's do John. I keep getting, okay, here we go. Let's look at John's work. Okay, very good, John. So John, um, uh, that's what jolted me and then sleep. Sleep again has a little room for more variation, but look at the beautiful, how he's writing di diagonally. So when there's a new idea, he comes back out. If, if we're giving information on the same idea, he's going further to the left and down to, I'm sorry, to the right, down to the right, down. No idea, unrelated, comes back out to the left. Love it. He does his been there, done that line to indicate that that's the, where the person stopped talking. I love it. Very good selectivity, very good um, uh, verticality and shifting. Love the been there, done that line. There's still a little more room for abbreviation of words. So try to get rid of the middle vowels and see if you feel comfortable with that. Okay, great work, you guys. All right, let's move on. Okay, we're going to listen to another message. And I want everybody to focus on those three things. Listen, visualize. Choose very selectively which works make it to your page. Don't write down everything you hear and abbreviate any word that you can. Okay, let me stop my share so you guys can't read. Here we go. Take a deep breath and let's get started. I decided to call my office to let them know that I was running late, but my phone was dead. I guess I forgot to charge it last night. And that's why it didn't go off this morning. Use your notes to voice record. All right, you guys, I think most of you are done. And now we're going to go move on to um, use the chat to share your keywords. In this particular segment, what were the keywords? DCD, huh? That's a great abbreviation. <laughs> Office, okay. Very good, you guys. What else? Call, run. Okay, good, 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 good. The call symbol, X charge, beautiful. And remember to save yourself a trace instead of an X, you can always write a slash, just a diagonal line. Good job, you guys. Okie doke. 
Now I want you to compare this latest recording to this text. Play your recording and take note of how you did. Here we go. Okay, you guys, I think most of you guys did it. Some of you guys did very well. Some of you guys have some, some things that are still uh, ironing out. And don't worry, this is the process. That's how it works, okay? This is the process of learning something new, okay? You do it and you do it and you do it until you get really good at it and you can do it without having to focus so much effort and attention on this task. And that frees up more attention for listening and visualizing, okay? Good job, you guys. All right. Now I want you guys to do the um, quantitative evaluation. Again, these are the words that I've chosen. This is not written in stone. It doesn't mean that those are the key words for everybody. But just so we can have an opportunity to quantify this, go along with the words that I've chosen as key units. So I want you to compare your notes to what I'm going to put up on the screen. And I want you to give yourself one point for each one of these words that you took note of or you drew a picture for or you abbreviated or that made it to your page in any way. OK, here we go. Good job, you guys. I see some good scores. I see some good scores. Good job. And remember, you might have um, written less than this and still what came out of your mouth was accurate. So that doesn't matter. If you're, if you, when you compared your, uh, your recording to the text, there was accuracy. We don't worry about this. We do worry about this if what you said was not faithful to the original message. Then we do want to look into, are you writing down the key meanings? Are you missing key things? Okay. But if you, let's say you got a four out of these, but when you opened your mouth, you were accurate, then you don't worry about it. Because that's all that matters, how accurate you are when you actually interpret. Okay. Now let's move on to taking off points for the fluff. Here we go. If any of these page words made it to your page in any way, you're going to take off one point. Here we go. I see a lot of zeros. Yay. Good. Good. You guys are not getting weighed down by the fluff. Some of you guys did a few of these. One, two. OK, then that's a goal. Work on not putting down words that are not necessary. You're going to connect the dots. OK. All righty. OK, we're almost done. So I wanted to give you guys a little sample of my notes. I'd like a volunteer. Well, first, let me look at one more sample of notes, and then I'll um, do some note taking uh, for you guys. I want you guys to go ahead and share your notes with us. Please make sure they are not perpendicular to, <laughs> they're not send it perpendicularly, that we can see them, and make sure that they are uh, not too small, okay? Let's go ahead and see the beautiful notes. Let's look at Jason's notes. Look at this beautiful thing. Okay, so we see, first of all, that he's got a six inches by nine inches steno pad, which I think is fantastic. We see a lot of spaciousness. We see a lot of selectivity, not just in the words that he's taken down, but in the abbreviation, in the letters that he takes down. Okay, we see symbols. Um, we see uh, shifting and verticality. This is perfect. This is where I want you guys headed. Look at his negative. It's just one slash. He's not wasting traces. And Jason, can you use the chat and tell me what this is? This symbol right here? These, um, I don't know if they're X's. If Jason can tell us. 
dead phone. Okay, great. So I would suggest for the word dead um, to choose two X's and get rid of the final X. So if you choose two X's, like the X's, the I's become X's, you don't need any more than two, okay? And anytime you can streamline your notes, it even better, okay? So the phone was dead. Good job. Love these notes, Jason. This is fantastic work. Let's go to Gamboa. Let's look at these notes. Very good selectivity. Very, very good selectivity. There's room for a little more verticality, but um, that's not what we're dealing with uh, today. Um, but uh, this, is, this is very good abbreviation, very good selectivity. Um, the word off maybe could have not been on the page. Um, it might have not been necessary. And I think this is this, THS is this, might not be necessary. But everything else is pretty essential and really, really selective and really, really good work. Okay, so I want to now share my notes with you guys. I'm going to ask for Marco to go ahead and read this text. And I'm going to share my notes. Okay. And give me one second. Let me make sure that you guys can see my notes. And I'm going to go ahead and pin. I'm going to, I'm going to stop my share for one minute so I can make sure that I pin the notes. Where are my notes? Here we go. Okie doke. This is not what I want. Give me one moment. Let me get to where I need to go. Okay. Here we go. All righty. Everybody should be able to see my notepad. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again so Marco can read these notes. I'm going to try not to look at that. And as Marco reads, I want everybody's eyes over here on my notes. Here we go. There was no way I could contact my boss to let her know that I would not be able to come in on time. I just had to rush and pray to make it there as soon as possible. Okay. There was no way I could contact my boss to let her know that I wasn't going to make it in on time. I just had to rush and pray to make it there as soon as possible. So we see there was no way became just a circle. Excuse me, Virginia. Yes. Um, maybe if you stop sharing the screen, they'll be able to see the notes larger right now. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Let me go ahead. Excellent um, uh, suggestion. So there was no way became a circle and a slash that I could contact. This is my symbol for call or contact. It comes from the telephone cord way back when, before I was born. <laughs> No, this is what it was when I was a child. We have these type of telephone cords, so this is contact. Boss became BSS. Let her know became let K. Come in on time. This is my come in or arrive or get in or enter. On time became a T. Rush, I omitted the U. Pray, I omitted the A. And ASAP basically was the last thing I did. Okay. Any observation on these notes? Anything you guys can see? Visual, clear, quick, amazing. Oh, you guys are too kind. <laughs> okay. So um, basically, let me go back to my PowerPoint. Let me share my screen. Go back here and share. So we're not going to get to do this last chunk. But I do want to talk about what we tried to cover today. Actually, let me go back. Okay, so what I wanted to make sure that we drilled today was the power of selectivity and how important it is for you to be selective with your notes, not just with the words you write down, but the letters of those words. I wanted you to make sure to know the importance of getting rid of the fluff. I wanted you to know the importance of visualization and listening, which again is the core of interpretation. We can't interpret unless we listen actively. Um, jotting down only key units of meaning, not getting weighed down by the fluff, any word that shouldn't make it to your page. Remember that connect the dots. Your notes should be, look like the, the dots, but you're going to have to weave the whole story together again and abbreviating long words. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. It, we're out of time, but I'm willing to stay for questions if you guys have any. 
Thank you so much, Virginia. I'm going to applaud because I'm the only one you can hear, but I'm sure everybody's <laughs> applauding wherever they are. I'm going to put Virginia's website in the chat and also the um, charitable cause that we're promoting today, Asian Family Support Services of Austin. And uh, the YouTube channel, if you want to get this video afterwards, you can go to my YouTube channel and see it posted on there probably on Monday. Um, but in the meantime, it's it's hard to get questions from the chat because it's such a big group that the uh, the um, questions go by so quickly. I wonder if it would be better to use the, the Q&A feature, um, which oh, yes. is available because this is a webinar. Um, that'll that'll be uh, easier to deal with. It's it's a slower um, feed. Uh, lots of lots of thanks are coming up on the chat, um, but I see. Uh, we had a couple of questions about uh, CE credits. So we're not offering continuing education on this because it's a free session. That's the paperwork gets to be too complicated. But if you have a certification from some authority that will allow you to report your own CE, then you're welcome to report this hour to them. Um, can you see the question and answer screen, Virginia? Yes, I do see. Let's see. OK, let's start with um, uh, anonymous attendee. Your NI manual does not have practice audios for all your symbols. Did you make or have additional practice audios to practice and learn all the symbols you provide in the NI manual? Um, actually, yes. So we're talking, uh, this person's question is regarding the note taking manual. Uh, we're actually working on a second edition in which you're going to be uh, drilling uh, many more symbols. So once the second edition comes out, you can go ahead and uh, drill many more symbols. But for the time being, I would recommend that you look at page 35 of the manual, you look at the symbols that are contained in the note taking manual, and you work with cards. So just like I have you do with the symbols that we do drill, which we drill 40 symbols, um, you would take the front of the card and you would draw the symbol as big as possible based on page 35. I tell you the symbol and the meaning. And then in the back of that card, you would write the meaning and then you would practice with those symbols. So you take the cards, look at the symbols and say the meaning. So let's say I were working with uh, 10 different cards. I would be going to call, to see, to go, to speak to stop, to start. And I'm going to try to do that faster each time. So you're going to work on being able to recognize that symbol and call it out as fast as possible. You can time yourself, then you shuffle the cards and you try again. So you can create your own cards. And if you want to take it to the next level, you can create your own dictations. You draft and type out dictations that contain those symbols, then you listen to them and you take notes. But you can definitely do practices and we will be coming out with the note taking manual second edition where we will be drilling more symbols. We also have a wonderful course. Um, Interpretrain offers a course called Note Taking Symbols and Techniques, which is really a favorite. Our students love it because we took the exercises in the manual and we just took you step by step through videos, audios, exercises, you see my samples of notes, and we take you step by step through the process. So for those of you who've already worked with a manual, or even if you haven't, and you're looking for a little more structure, and you want to be taken by the hand activity each act through each activity, you can go ahead and check out Interpret Train's website. And we have the note taking um, manual, the, the symbols and technique course for you guys. Okay. So how about tips for remembering or jotting down adjectives? Um, again, I think that abbreviation will take you a long way because we don't have symbols for every little thing. Uh, so any adjective that you think is important and you want to jot it down, make sure you abbreviate it. And uh, there, are, there are certain words that tend to come up more in certain lines of work. So if I'm a medical interpreter, the word injury is going to come up, um, the word cast is going to come up, the word um, modified duty is going to come up. So I'm going to have to make sure that I either have an abbreviation ready to go for that or a symbol ready to go for that. So start creating your own list of abbreviations and symbols that pertain to your line of work, because these are words we know are going to come up. Thank you. Uh, the next question is two main steps for longer chunks. Um, I definitely think that 
again, listening is the core of the whole operation. So work on listening and visualizing. And I also, as I mentioned previously, believe in the power of repetition of if you're going to work with a long chunk, do the same chunk over and over and over again, listen to it, take notes, read your notes out loud into a voice recorder, compare your rendition to the text and do that over and over and over again. Many students have this miscon misconception that repeating the same practice is kind of like cheating and that is not true artists mm -hmm. rehearse um actors rehearse athletes do drills. <laughs> so any profession where you're working on a skill repetition is absolutely essential this is the same thing with interpreting if you do a long chunk over and over again you pick up your brain, because now you know it by heart, your brain can focus on the skills you're trying to get, whether it's listening or better notes or being able to make sense of your notes, whatever that skill is, because you already know the content, your brain is not preoccupied with the content and it can focus on this new skill. If you do a long chunk over and over and over again, I promise you, you're going to pick up awesome, awesome skills. Having said that, we control the length of the chunk. Except when we're in an exam, we as interpreters have a right to interrupt. And I really urge you to do that. It is better for you to bite off as much as you can chew and not try to be the superhero and then lose information. OK, so um, there are days where I'm tired. There are days where I'm, it's, you know, Friday on four o'clock and I'm exhausted. I know I'm going to have to jump in more often. There are days where I haven't, this is the morning, I haven't had my coffee. I know I'm going to jump in more often. Um, there are certain people that speak in a very coherent way, sequentially logical. I can let them go on for longer. There are people who are very um, all over the place and their, their speech doesn't really follow much uh, logic. And I know I'm going to have to interrupt that type of speech more often. So don't be afraid to interrupt as much as you need to, to be faithful that that your uh, rendition will faithfully convey the original speech that's the most important thing so work where you where you're at right now don't try to be the superhero and then lose information little by little you will if you practice you will be able to get more but you shouldn't be uh, practicing outside of your comfort zone when you are interpreting professionally thank you next question is from max how do you come up with symbols uh how do I come up with symbols? Um, I have a very visual brain. I think I'm a little dyslexic. Um, I'm very dyslexic with numbers. Uh, when I'm reading out loud, I'm a little dyslexic. So my brain works uh, very, very visually and stuff just kind of comes to me. You know, it just like, uh, I just know the need for this word that comes up often. And then I, I don't think there's a process or I don't know how to explain the process. I'm sure if a psychologist studied my brain, they would come up with something, but I don't know. It kind of comes to me. But you have to, having said that, you have to choose symbols that make sense to you. So if I'm offering you symbols or a colleague is offering you symbols or a teacher is offering you symbols that you either have been using for something else, another meaning different from that, or whenever you try to draw that symbol, it doesn't click, or you've noticed that every time you use that symbol, it doesn't quite evoke that meaning, stop using that symbol and create your own. Okay, don't don't try to fit, it has to fit your needs, it has to spark your memory. And if it's not working that way, then you create symbols that do spark your memory. Right. Uh, next question, do you take your notes in the language you're hearing or in the target language? I always get that question. Um, I am a strong believer in you have to make this fit you. I tend to naturally, not because I'm trying, I tend to take my notes in the um, target language. I didn't today because we were working in English, but I noticed that I spontaneously take notes down in the target language. The exception to that is when I find a word that I don't quite know how to interpret yet, um, I tend to take it in the source language and miraculously nine out of 10 times when it comes time to render it, my brain has already sorted out how to interpret that word. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to stop taking notes because I can't think of the interpretation. So yeah. I guess the answer is it's a combination. Naturally speaking, my notes tend to be in the target language. Um, but when I don't know the interpretation, the, the rendition of a certain word, I just keep it in the source language and move on. Uh, but I want you to do what works for you. I don't want any teacher to tell you you have to take notes in the source language or you have to take notes in the target language. You have to do what net. There's so much going on, cognitively speaking, when we're interpreting that you don't want to add on to that another obligation. Like, no, I have to take notes in 
the source language or in the target language. Do what's natural to you. Don't put up any more roadblocks because there's already a lot going on when we interpret. Thank you. Okay, the next question, um, I'm just going down the list basically, unless it's something that I can type an answer to, was um, sometimes I'm finishing up my notes after a person finishes speaking and the judge is waiting. Does this happen to you? Yes, and I make them wait. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there is a delay. Uh, uh, the decalage is not just in a simultaneous. The decalage is also uh, present in note taking. I don't know if you guys were able to observe my notepad. I guess it wasn't as large on the screen as it should have been when Mark was reading. Um, but there is a little delay between what Mark is saying and when it makes it to my page. And I have found that when I take my time and I own taking my time, and I'm not apologetic for it, people respect that. I learned this from an attorney when I was working in Jersey, when I was working in Essex County as a staff court interpreter. And there was this young attorney, uh, a prosecutor, who would uh, say things like, Your Honor, uh, I'm going to take a moment, please, if I may, uh, to look up uh, the evidentiary rule, blah, blah, blah. And then she would take her time and she would look up the rule and everybody was so patient with her. And then there was another attorney, also a young attorney, young guy, and he was just all over the place. And he was like, one moment, one second, one. And he was rushing and he was, and everybody was so impatient with him. So when you have the attitude of this is what I need to do my job professionally and I'm going to take my time, people respond to you in that way. When you have an apologetic attitude, people feel rushed. But if you take your, take your pace down and you own the space and the time that you need, because your first obligation is to accuracy, it's not to do things quickly, it's not to please people, it's to do your job right, and you will do whatever it takes to get your job done right. And if somebody is giving you crap about it, then you say, your honor, the interpreter needs a moment, the, your honor, the, it's essential that I have time to do this and that, if it's necessary to explain it. But don't apologize for what you need to do to reach a faithful interpretation. Yes. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, recommended peer groups or platforms where interpreters can share best practices and support each other? Huh. I would like you guys to use the chat to help me out with that one. <laughs> there <laughs> are so many Facebook. I re in the US, I recommend uh, Najit for court interpreters and, and one of the professional groups for healthcare interpreters. Yes, and some people are also sharing some stuff on, on, on the chat. Um, we also, Interpret Train has, uh, we have a Facebook group, we have a YouTube channel, um, just check, check us out on social media. We also have a lot of people participating and sharing resources. We share a lot of, in our blog, in our newsletter, we share a lot of free resources all the time. So you could definitely check that out. And there's one here that hasn't been read, and I want like everybody to realize this. With your hair pulled back, you remind me of Shakira. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I had to read that one. I can't skip that one. Very important. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But my my hips don't. My hips do lie. They they they're, they're not as nimble as Shakira as I must admit. <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, uh, here we have a question about how you get into interpreting um, for somebody whose uh, English is a second language. Um, uh, we have a lot of resources on our webpage, so I recommend that you go to uh, www.interpretrain.com and we've laid out basically how to get your foot in the door, how to take your tests, how to prepare you know, a, a lot of many resources are there. Also, our Facebook group uh, deals with a lot of that. Okay, how about special tips for medical settings uh, and note-taking? Um, I'm sorry, I, I have to mention our group's name, which is the Court Interpreter Training Group. Um, uh, for that's medical... On yes. Okay. Yes. Um, the... the mm, for medical, I would advise that you be very assertive 
sometimes doctors want to rush you or they want to say you don't have to interpret this or they want to say I don't need your services because I can understand Spanish or I can speak Spanish. And uh, I find that when I work in the medical field, I have to be very assertive, very polite, very professional, but very assertive. Um, I also recommend that you have symbols ready to go for the words that you know are going to come up. Um, I recommend that you have very transparent communication just because there's no judge present or because there's no record present. That doesn't mean that uh, everybody should know what's happening at all times. So if there's a clarification that you need, you always go to the opposing side. So if I need to talk to this guy, what was it that you said? I first go to this guy and say, I'm just going to ask for a clarification. And then you go back to the person that you need. So everybody knows what's happening at all times. So assertiveness, um, have your symbols ready to go, know your vocab, and uh, be transparent. Don't leave, don't leave anybody in the dark. Thank you. Uh, the next question is about your demonstration of note taking at the end. You, uh, you had a horizontal line under words like ASAP and hi. What do those lines mean? Oh, um, I actually only had the line at the end of the chunk. So let me see if I can share this one more time, my notes. Let me go ahead and pin this guy. Okay. And I'm going to stop my share so you guys can see it a little better. Okay. So um, you can see here, this line is what I call the been there, done that line. That's basically a line that you draw when the person has finished talking or when you interrupt. This just lets me know this was one full chunk of speech. And when I start taking notes underneath here, I know these notes don't connect to the previous notes. They are how I can tell chunks apart from each other. OK, and a related question, is there a benefit in writing notes horizontally or vertically, or I would add diagonally? Yes, there is a huge benefit to that. And um, oh, what you do, and that's covered in the manual and also in our um, note taking and techniques course, note taking symbols and techniques course. Um, basically, what you do with verticality, let me share this guy one more time, Let's go to a fresh page and turn off the slide. There's a few things I got to do to get it right. And did I, where is my notes? Here we go. Let me pin it. Okay. Can everybody see my notes a little better then? Okay, so um, how does verticality work? So let me borrow from the message that we just did. So let's say, for example, it was, there was no way I could contact my boss to let her know that I was gonna arrive on time. Like everything of this is one same idea. So what we're doing is we're trying to go vertical and because we're giving additional information, we're shifting a little bit more to the right. That tells me that all these ideas belong together. I'm not going to keep going to the right because I have this middle line here that I want to obey. So that's the reason why if you run out of space, you just keep going down, 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 down. That lets me know this is the same idea. But when I said I just had to rush, this is a whole new idea. I just had to rush and pray to make it there ASAP. So all of this has to do with one single thought. So it's going, it's shift. I, I start at the top. I keep going down. If I'm giving further information, I keep going further right, further right, further right, further right. If I run out of page, I keep going down, down, down. But if I'm going to start a new idea that's not related to the previous one, that is a whole new idea, I go back out to the left and I keep doing the same thing. By doing this, what I'm doing is I'm giving myself an idea of how these, how these different chunks are connected to each other, how these thoughts are connected to each other. I'm going to know that all of this is one thought and this because I came back out to the left is a different different thought and this is something that takes a lot of practice so I do advise that you practice with your note-taking manual or again with our note-taking symbols and techniques course to drill this so it becomes automatic for you do you always use a sharpie for your notes no I use a pen but pen is not legible with this camera so I want it to be nice and big and legible for you guys um, is it better to get the manual through Interpretrain or through Amazon? You can go through both. Either one will work. Okay, we're slowly whittling away. Lots of, lots of questions here. Um, 
What's the best way to start learning about note taking symbols and other techniques? What book or material should you start with of your books, um, Virginia? Which one would you recommend to a beginner? Again, the note taking manual. Go ahead and look for the note taking manual on Amazon. And then okay. also um, you can uh, buy, I love our course and our students are really uh, have given us awesome feedback on our course. If you go to, to our website, interprettrain.com, you can uh, uh, buy our course, which is very reasonably priced. And it basically is like having a private teacher taking you step by step through techniques and symbols so you can really master these things because it's it's about practice it's not about knowing the understanding the, the the concept or knowing the theory it's about practicing until it's automatic to you my my father is a teacher and he used to say that math enters through the fingertips so it is through the practice to the through the repeated practice that the, this becomes a habit and it needs to be a habit it, the more that you practice and the more automatic it becomes the more attention that is freed up for you to listen and retain information if these things are new to you it's going to require more of your focus on your notes and that's when your notes begin to distract you from listening so I would definitely get started with the note taking manual, which is available in Amazon. And I would really urge you to look into our note taking symbols and techniques course in our website, which is, has gotten really good feedback. All right, do you recommend superscript for long words? Yes, that's one of the things that's covered in the manual, superscripting, which is you take the ending of the word and you write it a little bit higher and only the first few letters of the word. Okay. Here's an interesting one. Um, is there any good exercise on divisibility of attention, how to train it, and do I have to train my memory separately? Definitely, uh, divisibility of, of, uh, of uh, attention is, is, is a huge thing. Um, there is an exercise that Athena Matilski does that I really, really like. Uh, it's called extended sequence, uh, which is basically, um, but I'm sorry, before that, let me do another, another one that I like, a dual tasking which is you are listening to a simultaneous practice and you are shadowing it, meaning everything that you're hearing, you're repeating it in the same language. And as you're doing that, you're taking down the alphabet or you're taking down the numbers. So as you're speaking, you are writing the letters or you're writing the numbers. Um, that's a great way to learn how to divide your attention. And then when it comes to memory retention, the extended sequence exercise she does is awesome. And you can go ahead and look up Athena Matilski. She also has um, Athena Sky Interpreting. She also has videos on extended sequence, which is I have a list of words and I'm going to hold on to the previous word um, so let's say, for example, I say to you, the first word I say, you're not going to repeat it. I say house, you're not going to say anything. And then I say car. When I say car, you say house. And then I say boat. When I say boat, you're going to say the next, the second word I said. So if I say a third word, you're going to repeat the second word. If I say the fourth word, you're going to repeat the third word. If I say the fifth word, you're going to repeat the fourth word. So you're one word behind. And that is great for decalage because it trains your memory to hold on to something, but still be perceiving the next thing that comes on the list. So it's called extended sequence, and you can look it up on YouTube. And Athena has it under Athena Sky Interpreting. Thank Somebody you. was talking about anxiety, and I find that question really interesting. Uh, there are two things. Uh, how, how does anxiety get in the way of active listening, and how can you avoid that? Um, so, Andrea, I, that is an excellent question. Um, anxiety is one of our worst enemies because if we are, there's so much going on emotionally inside of us, it's very difficult to pay attention. So um, there's two things that I would advise for that. One is meditation. If you can work on um, just you know, there's a lot of on YouTube, a lot of free guided meditations, work on quieting the mind, work on getting your brain to come to a, a calm, attentive state, where you're very focused, but at the same time, you're very calm. So it's, it's a training thing, you have to train your brain to do that. And then secondly, breathing, when you're interpreting, and you notice yourself losing your cool, always come back to your breath come back to your breath, especially in the consecutive mode, as we're listening and taking notes, there's more chance to breathe and also insight, insight interpretation, there's more chance to breathe. In the simultaneous mode, there's really not much we could do because we're just rushing to keep up. But the consecutive and the sight interpretation mode modes do lend themselves to come back to our breathings. But I would definitely urge every interpreter to practice meditation daily.
when will your second edition be out for sale? <laughs> We're still working on it, so you'll know as soon as we as we have it out. We'll we'll. Um, my partners don't like me to announce things that aren't finished yet, so I guess. <laughs> I <don't finish> it. <laughs> what kind of listening exercises do you know to analyze a speech and to improve our memory? Again, uh, the note-taking manual is full of them and our course is full of them, but you can work with anything. Uh, there's so many tools nowadays and it's just um, a matter of creativity. You can go on YouTube, you can go on speech repository, um, you can go on our website. We've shared different links to different audios. So uh, if you check out our blog, you'll find a bunch of different resources where you can get audios to work with. And many of them come with a transcript so you can do what we were talking about. Um, when it comes to listening and, and memory, I don't think it's it's very important to have a material to work with, and there are many materials out there. But most importantly, I think the emphasis and the focus is what matters. So a lot of people are very quick to jump into the interpretation. If what you're working on is memory and uh, recept receptive listening, before you interpret, I would paraphrase uh, uh, in consecutive. So that means that you are listening to something. You could be taking notes or not. You could be visualizing and not taking notes. But when you, when you open your mouth, you're going to go in the same language. Why do we do that? Because when we take, remember in the cognitive psychology, we take equations out of the way, we take variables out of the equation so we can focus on the new task. If what you're trying to focus on is listening attentively and memorizing, you don't want your brain to be preoccupied with how do I say this in my target language? How do I say that? Right? You want your brain to just be worried about listening and memorizing. So when you paraphrase, meaning you say the meaning of the message with other words, but in the same language, that allows your brain to free up bandwidth and focus on the art of listening and the art of memorizing. And then after you've done a few exercises of that with the same chunk, then you can move on to interpreting. But that um, um, frees up your brain to be able to listen better, not being preoccupied with now I'm going to go into another language. Thank you. Uh, what are the steps of your self-practice method to interpret long speeches consecutively with notes for eight to 10 minutes? Well, I mean, I think it's the same thing I mentioned previously. You just have to work with longer and longer chunks. Bear in mind that uh, these are things that occur, for example, in conferences. This uh, eight to 10 minutes would not happen when it comes to uh, court interpretation, for example, or medical interpretation, but you will see that long form long consecutive form in um, conferences. And again, I would urge you to work on visualization. I would urge you to work on working with the same language first, paraphrasing before introducing new languages onto the equation. And I would urge you to work with repetition, meaning the same practice over and over and over again. When you know it by heart, you're going to be amazed at so many skills that you picked up. And then you're going to be able to apply those skills when you're not familiar with the content but you do want to become familiar with the content and what you can do also is you can set up an alarm and you can try to work longer and longer chunks so you say okay first i'm going to work for 30 seconds and i'm going to do the same chunk for 30 seconds and i'm not even going to interpret i'm just going to paraphrase it and then i'm going to do the same 30 second chunk and now i'm interpreting okay now i'm going to add 15 seconds or 10 seconds and progressively longer and longer chunks first not interpreting just paraphrasing and secondly then you introduce the second language but work progressively towards extending your your segments <laughs> it's a funny comment in the chat let's see if she can do it <laughs> what's that the president of Mexico spoke for eight minutes and turned to his interpreter and said let's see if she can do it <laughs> oh my god yeah Okay, how about this one? I've noticed that I have trouble with the last 20% of a rendition. How can I minimize that? Yes, uh, one of the ways that you can minimize that in real life is you can cut people short. <laughs> and don't be ashamed to cut people short until you work on it. Uh, another way that you can minimize that is take your time at the end. I always take my time as long as it takes, and it takes like maybe 10 seconds sometimes for me to finish my notes. And again, I have the attitude of this is what I need to do it. Uh, and visualization. Visualization. If you, if you visualize it, it'll be much easier to retrieve it than if you don't. Thank you. Um, what do you do to keep up when you're given too many words that you don't have a symbol for? Abbreviations. 
right? How about this one? Um, lots of us still work remotely and many of the proceedings don't lend to creative visualizations like detention hearings, status conferences, dry legally stuff. I assume they mean not a story that's easy to play out in your head. So do you have any questions, do you have any suggestions for that kind of content? Again, I don't know, because I am so visual, I find that um, any content allows me to, to visualize. So um, if, if you don't share that, uh, 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 if that's not something that that happens in your brain, then you can work on just listening exercises, you know, listening and, and then paraphrasing to work on, you know, maybe your brain is not wired for images, um, then you can work on just listening to the content and rendering it in paraphrasing, not worrying about the second language yet, just paraphrasing. A lot of what's happening uh, when people come to me and I find that they're, they're talking about their notes, they're talking about visualization, they're talking about this. The, the core of the problem is lack of listening and lack of concentration. Yeah. So the more that you can work on paraphrasing, which takes the language issue out of the equation and just lets you, fo lets you focus on listening, the more you're going to find that your um, listening skills are evolved and that your memory retention increases. How can we create our own list of symbols? Go with what you know works, uh, uh, shows up at work. So if I were to, I, if you guys could use the chat right now and uh, show me a list of things that you know come up all the time in your line of work. Like I can think off the top of my head as an interpreter, attorney, defendant, judge, bench, trial, jury, juror, <laughs> right? Like these are things that I know are gonna come up all the time. So I better have either an abbreviation ready to go or a symbol ready to go. Jesse's telling us surgery, appointment, phone, motion. Yeah. So you, you, you need to sit down and figure out what are the things that you know are going to come up and have something ready to go and drill it. Don't just say, okay, I'm going to decide to do this. And great. I understood it. I decided I'm done. No. Then it takes, remember, math enters through the fingertips. Then it takes the practice. So you can do the little card system I talked about where on the front you put the abbreviation and on the back you put the meaning. And then you go through each card looking at the abbreviation and trying to call out the meaning as fast as you can. And then you shuffle the cards, you time yourself, and you repeat until you can't lower your, your timing. What's the name of your Facebook group again for court interpreters? It's a uh, court interpreting group. Uh, let me have uh, Brad help me out with that because I'm terrible with that, with our social media uh, uh, presence. Brad, are you there? What is our Facebook group again called? Face Facebook Court Interpreter Training Group. Okay, I'll put that, I'll type that in the Q&A. Court Interpreter Training Group. And I'll put it in the chat. And also the name of mine, which is um, become a Texas court interpreter. Yes. Uh, yeah. Claudia asks, are you, do you have another interactive live training on note taking uh, in the works after this? Not for, not for the time being, no. Okay. Is Virginia doing an FCIC oral course this summer? If we don't plan that for now. We, um, but we do have this, our self-paced course uh, for you to prepare on your own. Okay. How do you handle speakers whose speech may not be coherent, such as witnesses or defendants in trials, like every witness and every defendant in every trial? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I jump in more often. I, I, um, I've noticed that when people speak slowly, when people speak coherently, when people speak uh, sequentially, I can take much more than when people are incoherent and when they speak fast. Also, emotions uh, affect me a lot. Like if somebody is agitated and angry, uh, I tend to be able to take less uh, than if they're calm. I can take more. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I evaluate it according to how much I can take. Um, also, when we're talking about certain types of speech, like description of actions in, in trials, when a witness is on the stand and they're asked, you know, how did the attacker assault you? And then they say, well, he came up to me and he punched me with his left hand and I fell to the ground. And then he came down to the ground and we struggled and we rolled over and then I kicked him with my left knee. And so in a matter of 20 seconds, there have been so many actions that are named. When I see actions coming up, 
I interrupt more often. So he came up to me and punched me with the left hand. Boom, I jump in. And then I fell to the ground. Boom, I jump in. So I know that certain speeches allow me to take more and certain speeches like description of yeah. actions need me to jump in more often. Hmm. That's true. Well, I, to those of you who are still on the call, I have combined some of your questions and dismissed them if I felt that Virginia was already answering them. So I apologize if you had something specific that, that didn't make the cut. But I think um, we've covered just about all of the topics. And so I'd like to suggest that we wrap things up and get on about our weekend. But I want to thank you, Virginia and Brad, for this very useful information.